Good afternoon. Welcome to Options Center. It's Friday. Welcome, everybody. It's June 14th, 2024. Today, I'm going to go through SPY on multiple time frames. We're going to go around the horn on the 65 minute for QQQ, IWM, VIX. And we want to take, uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time on IWM. Don't count it out yet. There is this, there's this chance that small caps could really ramp and we're in a setup territory for IWM. I know it's been a dog. It doesn't look pretty at all, but that might be the best time to uh, buy. So we are hedged with small caps again today. Now, um, I want to also give a little freebie on GME, uh, GameStop. And, uh, you know, if you become a member, you can get these individual analysis for super cheap. And I sent out two today in Tesla and, um, and Airbnb set up again. So um, let's, yeah, if you're new here, go down that bottom right-hand corner, hit that Options Center logo and subscribe. Um, uh, don't forget, I do... Uh, recommend that um, you go on 1.5 speed so you can get these videos done quicker. It's, it's just so much better. I started doing that myself and now I can watch so many more videos in less time. It's just, it, you know, you start to sound like a little mouse, but all right, I'm done rambling. We have SPY on the monthly time frame. Let's go over to the max. So what we're looking at, if you're new, we, we constantly talk about this 2000 top. We have 2022 top. It's the end of 21 and going into 22. And we're now in 24 right here. All even numbers. I don't know if that's coincidence or not, but we're right at that top again. We're going to be very, very careful on what we do. But, you know, sometimes these wedges, we're filling out this wedge. Sometimes these wedges throw over. Okay. So even on the monthly time frame, maybe we get a monthly candle that goes above and then wicks below it and gives us a reversal signal that's a possibility so let's go over to the weekly time frame on this weekly time frame we're looking at this just a little bit different closer rejecting off of that uh, top wedge we also have a little bit higher the top of this channel touch here touch here touch here it's a valid channel so maybe we overthrow get to the top there and maybe that's caused by the small caps actually catching up and making it they're going to have to make a massive fierce move in order to move the market uh with tech being it seems like tech strong but it, it's peter and our, there's not a whole lot that can go higher um at least on a uh a fast movement okay so we're very cautious we're, we're more doing a pairs trade overall we're short tech and now and uh, we are long small caps so looking at the Elliott picture I say Elliott picture it's Fibonacci I don't have the Elliott waves marked out here I have it on the daily time frame so I'll show you there but if price continues to go higher our next target on the on the weekly is 560 that's our extension how do we get our extension from this correction you get retracements past the 100 percent retracement starts the extensions our two most important is the 127.2 and next is the 560 and notice their zones we had trouble with the uh, 127 here got above it continuing now do we get to 560? We don't have to. That's just another huge sell uh, point. That would be a huge objective sell for us. Um, short. Okay, so any way you look at this, we have a time cluster at the end of July. So if price ends up up here by the end of July, that's going to be a great short for time relationship. If it ends up lower, maybe like a, a head and shoulder, we end up down here. We have a left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Maybe that's the neckline when we get into these time relationships. And that would be a nice uh, bounce play 
um, for possible right shoulder or even if we don't make it up here now maybe we go down into time relationship and we have one more move up okay i know a lot of ifs but what we're doing is price is going to show us a direction and then when we get into those relationships we have a setup I know some people are going to say, oh, you covered every scenario, and uh, so you can't be wrong. Well, I'm not looking to be right. I'm looking to trade, and so that's what we can trade off of, and I'm trading short off of this. It's very simple. The traditional technical analysis, we're at here, this confluence of resistances here. Even if we spike up a little bit higher because of the small caps taking off, maybe they bounce, and they, they ramp to the upside while tech is kind of holding the market to grind here. So maybe we grind a little bit to the upside in the SPY, the Qs uh, possibly start reversing and the small caps just rip, okay? That's kind of what I'm looking for. And if, if we just, you know, simply start falling, that's okay too. That is simply, we're you know, I'm, I'm trading to the down. I have SPY puts. I have QQQ puts. I, I have uh, SMH puts. I have SQQQ calls. I have so many things going on that side, and I'm hedging with that uh, small cap scenario. Now, um, if we get our top here, I do suspect that the wedge will break down, and then we'll talk about support after that. It could be the head and shoulders way down here and get a right shoulder and then lower or that could be somewhere where we get a low anywhere at any of these lows we'll talk about that with the and we'll we'll do it with the uh, indicators and everything um, if we make a low and make a new high up to that 560 point that's that is a possibility I think more probable that we break down but am I a fortune teller? I can't. No, we go day by day. And that's why we do these videos so often. So make sure you hit that notification button. Now, if you're new to this channel, we have the ending diagonal. This is what it looks like. We have, they're all made of three waves. You have a five wave move to end a major top. Three wave for one, three for two, wave three, wave four. And we're looking for wave five. Wave five could be two different ways. It could be an ABC already, and that's it. As soon as we get our top, and then we start moving down. This It's not necessarily going to look like this. This is not um, exactly what we're looking for, although that would set up a smaller head and shoulder there. So maybe the smaller one heads into the larger one. So, um, yeah, so we're looking for that top. And the alternative would be where the A is up here, and then we get a B lower, and then we get that higher C up at 560. That's our alternate. And so we're looking at the um, time relationship. We have a couple relationships right here at 617 that's coming up on Monday going into Tuesday. And so maybe the top's already in, but uh, this time relationship says, hey, something else might happen. So let's see where price ends up going into Monday and Tuesday and maybe that signifies just a short-term low that's fine you know then we know that we're going to head a little bit higher from there uh, if we end up higher going into monday and tuesday then we're looking for a great short setup at that point okay now on the here's a picture of the alternate that we're looking at the alternate ending diagonal and that's it doesn't need to look like this but i just have an a a little bit higher a b uh, wherever it ends up could be a sideways triangle it can be any anything really uh, it could waste time with a flat pattern and then a higher level at uh, 560 would be that next level let's go down to the 65 On the 65 minute, we've hit our target. We've hit our zone, just the lower end, but there is still some room to go up just a little bit higher into this time relationship, which is 617. And this is 616. So, um, you know, it, it's a it, it's still a time zone. It's not always on the day. It'll be Monday or Tuesday, but uh, 
we could get up just a little bit higher here. And um, this is just our wedge bottom, which is also a zone because we have our actual wedge bottom here. And then you have just this possible, if we wick through there, the geometric line from these two points. So um, if price wants to wick through here and stick save and then go higher, that's a possibility. So that's why we did this. Um, it'll also coincide with this 200 moving average on the 65 minute. Now going into the Elliott wave picture, we have a possible one, two, three, four, five, and it's done. Or again, going into, you see we have the relationship with um, 617. I don't know why I have 616 on the other one, but it doesn't matter because we always look at this zone. So there's a uh, couple relationships here. Um, one today is one. So that could be a bottom today with this relationship and I'll take it off being the 614. So we already see that I'll take it off and then going into 617, maybe we'll just have a little bit higher, Could go, but we've already hit our target on this time frame, and that's from this correction here. From top to bottom, we have our extensions that we exceeded, then we got over the 100%, and so our first, the major ones are 127.2, and then 161.8 extension there, and we hit all of them and there's some in between that we that played a role too so um but we had all the extensions into our last target so yes this can be the top but this can also be counted elliott wave is speculation you guys so it just gives me a look of structure so we can kind of picture what's going on impulsive and things like that and so the reason why i said this is a possible abc is because of this three-way move up for a b c into a b and then one two three four five to end with the C. And that uh, again could be done here. The while the Qs are making higher highs, the uh, you know the SP doesn't have to go higher. It could be that <clears throat> it doesn't have to get a high at all. It could get just a new high for this time frame into 617 and then start moving down from there while the Qs actually start to reverse. So tech is holding us up, so that's very important to take a look at. Uh, we'll go over there. We're not going to do the full tech video. Uh, I might do that uh, for members on weekend. So just check it out for the members. Going to, let's just go to QQQ. On the 65 minute, give you a visual of that. A little bit of room up to the, the top there. If this is the geometric line that uses it, and we have a wedge forming here. So you have some room to the upside if it wants to go. If not, we start to see a reversal, then we see a possible breakdown of there. Now the candle pattern that looks like what's happening here is some sort of ending diagonal. If we uh, actually start breaking to the upside, that would be uh, quite rare um, with a little wedge forming there, but it does happen. So it looks like this one's just about done where we have a one, two, three, four, and five. It looks like a five way move in there too. Yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, it looks like, it looks like we're just about complete on here, even though we have room to the upside, but you never know what price wants to do. So we're looking for a reversal going into Tuesday or so. Now, notice a lot of these setups are very weak on the small caps. We got into Airbnb, for example, had a nice trade, and uh, we found uh, we took a trade off. We actually rolled and took profit um, into the resistance, and it started to fail back, but now it's setting up again. So I, I these small caps are just not going away and they've been suppressed for so long so i think they have a lot of energy to exhume and that could happen next week so let's look at iwm iwm sort of has this inverse head and shoulder setup here where this is the left shoulder head and right shoulder this right shoulder keeps getting deeper and it concerning but uh if we look at this we're, we're down underneath this this trend line and i don't think it's very valid anymore because we had the bottom you had one touch here and then really it didn't play any significance i mean just a little on the lower time frames but we broke through it broke in it you know all these things are happening so really i'm just going to take this out for now i don't want it to bother my decision and i don't think it's a valid it keeps prices and all so price is holding here and just looking at this picture itself this being a possible impulse move getting a higher low 
This looks like a corrective move. We have an A, B spike up, and then C, five wave move down, and I thought that was it. But now, to me, that looks like a larger A. So the three wave move down for A, B, a spike above and a fake break, and an impulse C down here. And now we have divergences on um, the 65. So we have positive divergence. And so we, at minimum, could get a bounce here if this wants to continue lower. Maybe we just get a bounce and go lower from there. But uh, this does look like a good setup. And it's also, on the Elliott Wave picture, right into the 62% retracement. It's a golden zone. We have a one-two setup here. So I am long IWM. I have some small caps included. Now that we saw this happen again, um, I didn't know... Uh, what was happening with this move. I thought it could have moved further, but it ended up right in our buy zone. All right, now let's take a quick look at the VIX. VIX looked like it wanted to break out. It's kind of back testing this wedge. Um, still could go higher. Like I said, the market could go down with the Small caps going up. We'll have to monitor this uh, at this point. It looks kind of like a fake break. So it could get to new lows, which, which that's what I was expecting if the market was going to go higher. Um, but with the small caps down, it controls the VIX. Uh, and hmm. So we'll have to keep looking at this market. VIX goes up. Let's just simplify it. VIX goes up. Market goes down. VIX goes down. They'll let the market go up with it. So just a huge dichotomy. Um, I got to wrap this up. So let's check GME real quick. Now GME. It's in a pretty good setup. We're talking about a triangle pattern. So possibly uh, could be breaking out pretty soon here. And what's, what I'm looking at is two different scenarios. So this could be an, a regular triangle it's where this is A, B, and it's a continuation pattern, C, D, and the pattern's done. And now this is a possible one, two, and this thing starts moving into next week. The other option that I'm looking for after is an A, B, C, D, um, D could be higher and this continue to fill out the triangle. I know there's events, there's stocks going into next week's options expiration. So, you know, we, we have to be aware of that. So I think if it's going to make its move, it's going to be sooner than later. But again, like any trade that I talk about, we want to see the test at the top of the triangle and, and, and my trade will be out before then, you know, so if this thing starts breaking out from this triangle, it's just going to rock and I'm not going to play around with that. I just want to get the meat of the trade here um, and look at it. It could be reverse at this point and fill out and then go. Uh, but if this is an A, B, C, D, and then E a lot of times has an a, uh, it can form a triangle in it as well. So this could be a triangle forming, but it looks like it wants to break out. So... We'll see what happens by the end of the day here. Um, hopefully we can get a test up here. And then um, on the daily time frame, and we're holding that 8 EMA. So that's important. Everything's kind of going sideways as if this is a triangle. But the 8 EMA could start curling or holding the 8 EMA. It looks uh, like a bullish stance. It's also a uh, hammer candle. And we'll see if uh, we get some follow through with that. So that's how we're looking at GME. That's um, we did a trade alert earlier today. Uh, supporters get that. It's like 99 cents. And then uh, the individual uh, stock analysis is um, uh, three or five dollars, something like that. So thanks for joining us here. At Option Center. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll talk to you soon.